Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us for story time tonight. Tonight, we're going to continue with Abadeha, the Cinderella tale from the Philippines. The rainy season came and left before Abadeha went back to her mother's grave. Miraculously, where she had planted the Sarimanuk's feet, there had grown an enchanted tree laden with treasures. Rings, bracelets, necklaces, earrings, pearls, diamonds, and golden gowns all hung from the bows. Abadeha was excited to have found this unusual tree, yet she decided to keep it a secret and only took a few pieces of jewelry with her. Returning home, Abadeha hid the pieces in an old trunk in the granary. When she went into the house, stepmother was already waiting for her. Where have you been? You are trying to get away from work again, the cruel woman said harshly as she threw a blanket at Abadeha. Now mend the blanket this instant. Poor Abadeha slowly picked up the blanket and went to the corner of the kitchen. There, even though piles of work awaited her, she found solace by the warm stove. While hunting in the forest one day, the handsome son of the island chieftain saw a Sari Manuk. He followed it to Abadeha's secret garden. The prince could not believe his eyes when he caught sight of the tree. He took out tobacco leaves and betel nuts from his bag and respectfully laid them in front of the trunk. Then he knelt down and bowed his head. Badhala and spirit of the forest, forgive me for stepping on your sacred ground. Please accept my humble offerings and allow me to receive one of your precious gifts from the tree. The prince picked up a ring from the branch and slipped it onto his finger. That evening at home, the prince's finger began to swell. He called out to Datu, his father. Father, my finger hurts badly and I cannot remove this ring, the prince said with a shaking voice, his face distorted with pain. Datu sent for the Babylon, the priest healer, right away. The Babylon performed a ritual but failed to remove the ring. He could help very little except to say, listen to your heart, it will tell you what to do. The night wore on and the pain in the prince's finger became unbearable. In a fevered dream, a Sarimanuk came to him with an orchid in its beak. The prince took the flower and kissed it. All of a sudden, the flower turned into a beautiful maiden. She opened her hand and showed him a ring. The prince looked down at his hand and the ring was no longer on his finger. The prince woke up in a heavy sweat and told his father what was revealed to him in the dream. Datu quickly summoned the island messenger and ordered, Beat your drums! Tell everyone that the girl who can remove the ring from my son's finger will be his bride. The messenger wasted no time. By midday, he had spread the news to all the islands. A great number of unmarried girls flocked to see the prince, but none of them could remove the ring. When Abadeha heard about the ring, she asked for permission to go. You do not deserve to see the prince. Your place is in the kitchen. Stepmother pushed Abadeha inside and locked the door. As stepmother lay down on a hammock for her nap, the spirit of the forest appeared and unlocked the door. The prince is waiting for you, she told Abadeha with a smile. Go now and see him. Abadeha's stepsisters were at the prince's royal house when she arrived. How dare you come here, the first one snarled. Look at yourself, you are so filthy, the second one said with a glare. The prince heard the commotion and signaled, let her come near. Everyone looked on in disbelief as Abadeha, in her ragged clothes, approached the prince. Lovingly, she took the prince's hand and gently removed the ring from his finger. The prince was overjoyed and kissed Abadeha's hands. He exclaimed as he pressed her hands against his heart, You are the one. Today you shall be my bride. All the people in the islands of the Philippines rejoiced at the wedding of Abadeha and the prince. Dancers, singers, musicians, poets, and magicians put on their best performances to celebrate the largest 
and merriest wedding anyone had ever seen. Abadeha wore the golden gown and the jewelry from the enchanted tree to her wedding. Hovering happily nearby was the spirit of the forest, Abadeha's very special guest whom only she could see. Abadeha's father came home just in time for the occasion. He was sad that Abadeha had to endure such suffering while he was away, but he was proud of her courage. As for stepmother and her two daughters, the prince banished them to the chicken yard where they spent the rest of their lives. Abadeha and her prince shared their happiness and wealth with the people on the islands. They enjoyed a long life of harmony, peace, and love. The end. Thank you guys for joining us. Have a good evening. Thank you.